Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, thank you for taking uh, time out of your night in order to come and watch our pitch. Uh, we are the Rasa Agency. Are you ready? Uh, my name is Ashton Riyadh. I'm from Macomb, Mississippi. I'm an integrated marketing and communications major, and I'm the team coordinator and research director. Hey, guys. My name is Tobias Bogan. I'm from Philadelphia, Mississippi. I'm an IMC major as well, and on Rasa, I serve as the graphic design and digital marketing specialist. I'm Avery Dargan. I'm from Hingham, Massachusetts, also an IMC major. I'm the social media marketing specialist. And last but certainly not least, I'm Ryan Granger, IMC major from Pearl, Mississippi, and my title is Communications Coordinator and Research Analysis. So the Rasa Agency was presented with the challenge of increasing membership retention and just overall membership at the LOU Barksdale Boys and Girls Club location. After great great, great lengths of research and extensive time spent on just understanding the club, we decided that the best solution to this problem would be a collaboration between Ole Miss Athletics and Boys and Girls Club through a campaign titled, Are You Ready for the Club? Our target audiences are parents, and the, specifically the children of those parents, specifically the teenage children of those parents, and the design of our club, I mean, the design of our um, campaign is littered and specifically themed around the Ole Miss Athletics color scheme. Our media platforms include Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And our budget allotted by the Boys and Girls Club is $15,000, which we use efficiently throughout the campaign. As for our SWOT analysis, it was really easy for us to identify the strengths and opportunities rather than the weaknesses and threats, as you can see. Um, in the state of Mississippi, the Boys and Girls Club um, houses 500 youth as members, and 73% of those members are under the age of 12, which is a really impressionable time. Uh, they keep safety the number one priority between school and home, which is a great aspect to the club. They offer programs for the students um, for academic, health, lifestyle, career, and through those programs with after-school programs, uh, the members of the club can maintain a 3.0 GPA uh, and above. They also offer a really low tuition, which really can't compete with any other after-school programs in the town of Oxford. It's only $50 a semester, and with that causes low funding. Since the tuition is so low, our club is one of the most expensive locations to keep open um, because it's independently owned and operated. Also being located in a college town, the staffing turnover is really high. So it's really hard to find amazing uh, employees like Mr. Oliver and Mr. Wilson who stick around and work for the club long term. And lastly, for our weaknesses, uh, a lot of teenagers may see the club as uncool. We want to change that. Um, they might see it as a daycare or a place for young kids when it's not. It's from the age 6 to 18. Uh, so this gives us the opportunity to attract a younger demographic and maintain that young demographic. We want to work with the college community and Ole Miss Athletics to really make it look attractive for the teens. Lastly, our threats are really similar to our weaknesses. The fact that teens might think it's not cool, not the place to be, or maybe that some parents don't realize that it has great opportunities for their education and for their safety. Um, as far as our research is concerned, we were able to gather excellent research uh, through interviews uh, with Mr. Knorris Wilson, uh, the director of the club here in Oxford, and through that we were able to gain different insight as far as what the kids are like, uh, what the day-to-day -day activity at the club is like, and also, you know, what their interests are, what they like, what they dislike, etc. We were also able to interview Dr. Lynette Johnson, the Deputy Athletic Director uh, here at the University of Mississippi. She oversees sports and administration in different departments including human resources, uh, product development, sport uh, development, student athlete development. But in particular, she works with the Life Skills Department who we hope to work with very closely uh, through our campaign because the Life Skills Department at the Athletic Foundation basically uh, serves as the outreach and also uh, partners with philanthropy and community. And so through them, we would able we would allow them to be the middleman in order for us to complete a lot of the tasks that we would like to you know do with the boys and girls club whether that be throwing a first pitch at a baseball game or getting tickets for a christmas game uh basketball uh things of that nature uh some other uh research we were able to get were, were surveys conducted uh, by mr knorris wilson 
we were also able to get a site visit uh, at the Boys and Girls Club. And some secondary research were, we obtained was uh, the overview provided by the LOU Barksdale Club. And as far as our audience is concerned, uh, we targeted two uh, segments, uh, parents and teenagers. Uh, parents, they're the decision makers. I mean, all goes through them. Uh, they're very highly protective of their children and very, very uh, interested in, in their well-being, uh, obviously. And so we must, we must market the opportunities that the Boys and Girls Club provides for their children, uh, whether that be the character development programs, all the different extracurricular programs, whether it be, you know, uh, different character development and, and, and stuff like that that the Boys and Girls Club does for these kids, the homework hours, uh, etc., that just serves as uh, character builders for the children. And uh, as far as the teens are concerned, the actual teens themselves, uh, it's a great group to target because teens don't necessarily have that brand loyalty and brand identification uh, solidified. And so what we plan to do with our campaign in its entirety is to change the perception of the Boys and Girls Club within the community as not just a daycare, not just an after school care program in which you know, kids are being dropped off to you know, go run around. Uh, we wanna focus in on the, the development process that the Boys and Girls Club is able to provide for those children. Um, and, and with that being said, with our partnership with athletics, we would like for the children to also have those role model sources, whether that be you know, a coach coming and speaking to the kids, or whether that be an athlete coming and, and shooting the basketball with the kids. Things like that that will further help them and also serve to show, hey, we do some cool things here at the Boys and Girls Club. Why don't y'all come join? And, and, and the word of mouth will ultimately be in our favor. And uh, with that being said, uh, through my research with, uh, or through our research with uh, Mr. Kenoris Wilson, we were able to obtain the fact, or obtain information regarding the children and their likes those kids love sports. They love sports. They love to do things, whether it be traveling to Ole Miss, whether it be keeping up with them on TV, uh, those kinds of things. And so we believe that with our partnership with athletics, we will be able to absolutely hit home with those kids. So as far as our campaign objectives, uh, as Ron and uh, Ashton stated uh, before, um, our objectives are to increase membership and, and membership retention. So basically that just means we want to get our numbers up, uh, get more kids there, not even just the kids from age 12 to 18, but also the younger kids too. Uh, you know, we don't want to turn anybody down. And membership retention, that age when they stop coming at 12, we want to keep those keep those guys coming, keep them coming in until they're 18. Uh, we want to change the opinions that people have about the Boys and Girls Club. Uh, like they said, parents think that it may be a, day a daycare. Um, it is $50 a semester. That is not a lot of money when it, you know, if you're comparing it to a daycare. So, oh, I can take my kids there and they'll be fine, but it's not a daycare. Or you want uh, the teenagers to know that it's a cool place to be. Like, and if we can tell, you know, we can get a few thinking it's cool, then they'll tell their friends and everybody thinks it's cool. Um, so we also want it uh, to be a productive place and we want to make sure their parents, the parents know that the kids will flourish there. Um, we have the numbers to back us up, and you know the statistics that show um, our GPA is a 3.0. You know, different people going who came through the Boys and Girls Club, um, who've done uh, successful things in their life. So that's why we came up with the "Are You Ready for the Club?" Uh, because of our research, we determined that you know the kids really like sports or whatever. And so whenever you think "Are You Ready," you, your mind automatically goes to you know Ole Miss athletics. That's the first thing you think about. So that's the first thing they'll say, "Oh my God, Ole Miss athletics! Are you ready?" And "Are you ready?" just doesn't mean "Are you ready for the club?" It can mean anything. "Are you ready?" You know, for your future. And we we have S and P's um, throughout our slides that you'll see uh, based around the "Are You Ready?" campaign. And here's our media plan. Um, so as far as social media, we plan to use Facebook, Instagram, and Snapchat. Um, our Facebook is where we target most of our uh, parents. Um, parents get most of their information from Facebook according to our research, so we'll keep using that. As far as Instagram, we know most teenagers have an Instagram and a Snapchat, so we'll target our teenagers through Instagram and Snapchat. And of course, we'll end up reaching some parents too because a lot of parents these days have those two. Uh, as far as print media, uh, we have a magazine ad and a brochure um, that Avery will talk about later. And as far as earned media, um, earned media is one of the best kinds of media because it's free. Um, so all we have to do is just keep doing what we're doing, you know, do great through the community and stuff. And people, uh, well, people will hear about what we're doing, you know, and TV uh, stations will hear about it, newspaper article, newspaper places will hear about it, and they'll want to come and see what we're doing. And they'll come and, you know, they'll write a story about it, and that's exposure right there that we'll get. Um, for digital marketing, we'll do a Facebook and Instagram audience insights. 
and I'll show you that on the next slide. And then as far as our budget, we plan to use $1,000 for each social media platform and $5,000 on our print medium. So here's the digital marketing, and basically we pick our campaign that we want to do, which is brand awareness. We go here and we create an audience. We can do look alike or custom, both are great, uh, great fits for whatever we want to do. And then um, you can plug in whatever you want to plug in, uh, customer list, any kind of database that you have that you want to plug in, you can plug that in and it'll generate an audience for you through Facebook. And then uh, generated through Oxford, um, and this is the amount of people we can reach. We can reach uh, 110,000 people uh, through Facebook with an ad or a boost in the post, and we can reach uh, 3,000 to 8,000 uh, people a day. As for our digital marketing, uh, design-wise, we wanted to stick with really familiar colors. So when you think of Ole Miss, you think of these colors, red, powder blue, white, navy. So we kept that theme throughout every marketing plan that we had. Um, as mentioned before, for our parents' audience, Facebook is the number one place that they go to based on our surveys uh, to find out, about, find out about what's going on in the community. Facebook is the place. So this is an example of a sponsored ad that we could put out, are you ready for the club? A uh, call to action, come join the club today with a lead to the website that a parent could see on their Facebook feed. For our younger audience, we wanted to use Instagram. 90% um, of Instagram users are under the age of 35, so we could really reach our teenage audience. Same color scheme, same SMP, we just changed it up a little bit because for the teens, they might not want to see, are you ready for the club? They might want to see things about their future. Are you ready for your future to succeed? Are you ready for fun? So these are some Instagram ads. The learn more link would lead them to the website to read more or join the club. Uh, we used Snapchat also to target the teenagers. 70% um, of Snapchat users are under the age of 24. So there's a little sponsored video that we could share. Um, there's also a geotag. And these are all dependent on location, so these would really target um, people in the area. Same SMP, same color scheme. And for our visual and copy, um, parents-wise, the second most listed place on our surveys where they find information about the community was print ad. So places like Oxford Magazine and Invitation Magazine are really popular around town. Just a simple advertisement to catch people's eye. This is just a little paragraph. It says, we at the Boys and Girls Club of North Mississippi pride ourselves keeping children's safety the number one priority. BGCA is the hub for the leaders of tomorrow, the perfect environment where students can learn, exercise, and practice healthy lifestyle habits while having fun doing so. BGCA, LOU Barksdale is a proud partner of Ole Miss Athletics. Are you ready? Join the club today. So that would be just some simple information that might entice parents to head to the website and learn more about the club. And then lastly, just a basic brochure that we designed. It lists the same mission, um, some statistics, and some information about the programs offered at the club. We thought that this could be held for free at the front of the Boys and Girls Club if some people stop by or even around town where they offer free brochures. Here's an in-depth look um, at our budget um, as both Tobias and Avery have addressed in social media promotions. Um, $3,000 here allotted would be $1,000 per platform. And we just, just through re extensive research, we decided that $1,000 per platform would be the most efficient use of that 20% of our overall budget. Print marketing would be $5,000, 33%. And lastly, and unsurprisingly, Ole Miss Athletics is the highest <clears throat> projected um, portion of our total. And it's almost 50%, but it makes sense through our research with Dr. Johnson that investing the most of our monetary you know, funds into Ole Miss, the, the athletic part of the campaign, would make it beneficial and would be an efficient use of that portion of the funds. And just so basically, we really vigorously wanted to make sure that the funds were going in, that they were allocated in the correct way, um, because the funds really are the fuel for the campaign. If you don't have money behind what you're doing, then it wouldn't really be a proof that you believe in it. And so we want to make sure not only that we're using them efficiently, but we're using them in a way that benefits um, the club overall. And so in conclusion, we believe that the objectives set out by the Boys and Girls Club uh, are effectively taken care of uh, through our campaign, whether that be uh, focusing on membership, uh, retention, 
whether that be focusing on awareness throughout the community. Um, our research backs this by focusing in on the actual kids themselves, what they like to do, what they don't like to do, and also what we can partner with athletics to make uh, the notion that you know the Boys and Girls Club is a cool place to go. It's a great place to go, and so forth. And uh, our analysis basically led us to conclude that, uh, if implemented, that the Boys and Girls Club will see the best uh, the best days that it's seen in its 50 plus years of existence. And that's our campaign. Thank you. Thank, Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Any questions? Yes. What will the 7,000 athletic be spent on? So that'll be spent on more so like in-game promotions, uh, whether that be, you know, different types of uh, uh, advertisements for the Boys and Girls Club, uh, whether it be at a basketball game, baseball, or football, or different partnerships to, you know, uh, like throwing out a first pitch at a baseball game, those things uh, you can purchase uh, as like a package. And also, it, it just goes to like, whether or not we use that actual 7,000, we're using that as more so like the monetary, like we'll, we'll make sure that we have that 7,000 allocated if we need to use all of it. I can't imagine that that would necessarily be the case, but we wanna have it allotted in the athletics uh, section or sector, uh, just in case. You know we're nonprofit and we expect Ole Miss to pay for that. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. No, I think Ms. Leo makes a good point there. We would probably want to see a little bit more specific specifics on where that would go. Right. So, you know, from that standpoint. Yes. I have a question, same kind of vein, because I thought of the same stuff. Um, but they um, did Dr. Johnson give you any kind of indication of the value in kind that they would provide? So if you did do some ads at some of those games, you know, something on the Jumbotron or something to drive awareness, what would they then do? Would they do something in return, like players coming to visit the facility or a coach or, that. you know, would they feature one of the kids at halftime or get tickets to be able to attend the game or? Yes, ma'am. And, and, and that would be done through the, through the life skills department. Uh, so the life skills department, okay. they, they focus on like the outreach as far as, you know, different philanthropy and stuff like that. Essentially with the money that we would be putting into uh, the like, like athletics with our budget, it, it would be basically just to put like that one step in and so they can, you know, we pat their back, they pat our back type deal. And so I think that with us uh, focusing in on those like in-game promotions and whatnot, that focus on the outreach. Whereas I think that like what I discussed with Dr. Johnson is that Essentially, it'd be like a really, really good move for, for PR purposes in order to get our name out there with athletics. And I think that that partnership would grow as a response. Did she indicate something that they would do, though? That's, um, what, that's what I'm curious about. If she saw the value, because it does a lot for Ole Miss athletics, too, I think. Yes, ma'am. Good idea. Oh, no, absolutely. I, I, I think y'all's idea is well, I really know. interesting. I'm just wondering if she gave any indication that of her level of right. commitment back. You guys did discuss um, free tickets for kids, uh, the baseball pitch, things like that, where it's give and take kind of looks good for athletics, benefits the kids. On um, winter breaks, when students are out of town, it's a smaller less full game, give tickets to the Boys and Girls Club, type of things like that. Absolutely, and they'll be able to uh, publicize that to their widespread audience of well over 550,000 uh, on all social media platforms. Another idea along those lines is, is that, I know when I was at the bank and I handled sports marketing uh, for, for, for the company, uh, you know, you can be a sponsor, uh, and, and you know, from a sponsor standpoint, they're doing the pay, they need an organization to tie into. Mm -hmm. So then what happens is they would feature maybe the Boys and Girls Club at high time in some way. Absolutely. Tickets you make, do they get, right. you get an opportunity? Because, you know, when you've got an off game, not an SEC game, mm -hmm. they're not feeling obviously the stadium up, and they want the seats. <laughs> you know, I've seen buses pull up with you know with kids on them and stuff from uh, from schools. So I think those are the kind of things that you would focus a little bit more detail on uh, when you're 
pitching that back to, to, to the client to give them some a little bit more ideas. Overall, you were trying to say, hey, some good part of our budget is going to be directed to sports. You're using a are you ready theme, but we would need a little, probably a little more detail from that standpoint. Yes, sir. Did the team say what made the club uncool to them? Did you go into any depth getting? Honestly, they had the, the daycare stigma kind of like they thought it was for little kids. And so they didn't think it was something that would be cool for a teen to hang out after school with little kids. They didn't want to kind of be, have to tell their friends they were going to daycare because everybody kind of considered it a daycare. Was that and so that's the stigma. Yeah, and that was. Yeah. And how did they address that? Just work. Yeah, based on the research, that's, a, that's what a lot of the teens, as far as them like not retaining their membership or, or leaving whenever they hit right. certain ages, that, that was the overwhelming uh, response as far as like why. And it, it kind of helps with them having their own area away from mm -hmm. away from the little kids, mm -hmm. but at the same time they still have, you know, grew up, still have a perception of, of it being a daycare or uncool or being with the little kids. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, right there at that like 13, 14, 15 age, just at a, such an impressionable age, you know, it could take one person to be like, hey, I don't like the Boys and Girls Club anymore. He, and you know, his friend's like, oh, if you're not going, I'm not going. You know, that's two, and the next thing you know, and it the rest of them just follow behind. You know? And it works the other way. If yeah. this becomes cool, then they're like, I'm going to the Boys and Girls Club now. If it's cool now, they're, they're, it's definitely going to be something they, so they want to do, and they'll tell their parents they want to do. Right. And then they would try to give them a variety of things to do mm -hmm. uh, in their own area, mm -hmm. in their home, away from home, you know, where we had to find. Yeah. Uh, so, so that helps out a lot too. Absolutely. Did you have an opportunity to look at our website? Mm -hmm. and the specific North, I'm sorry. Northern Mississippi website? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't see it referenced in any of your material. Yeah, boys and girls well, of America. Right. well, also, we were hoping to, uh, you know, use what we uh, talked about here. And, you know, this this can apply to uh, other boys and girls clubs uh, in northern Mississippi. Uh, you know, maybe not Ole Miss Athletics, but, uh, you know, community colleges and stuff around uh, that are in the same areas as uh, some of those uh, other locations. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you all so much.